Hello and a welcome back to This or That with Kobe and Das presented by Verizon 2021 version. Let's go. We made it. We made it through 2020. Woo. We got the rebrand coming, Kobe. <laughs> made by many is the LCS. I am so pumped for 2021. I don't know about you. And we're going to start the season off with a tournament for Spring Split. I'm super excited about that. Uh, yes. I'm assuming that we're going to get right into that with some of these slides. So let's get to the slides. Number one, stronger lock-in group. Is it Group A or Group B? Uh, just right off the bat, I had to say Group A. Uh, group A there with Team Liquid and TSM, as well as 100 Thieves, basically the old Golden Guardians members added to someday, keeping an upgrade there up in the top side of the map. Um, I know that for the lock-in tournament, there are going to be a lot of subs yeah. uh, because some some players haven't gotten over here. Uh, and I think that is going to hit Group B a little bit harder. The argument, of course, for Group B is Cloud9. Right. Well, so, so it's interesting because I also think the argument for Group A maybe not being as strong is the two bottom teams. Now mm -hmm. Golden Guardians and CLG, who I just don't really think are going to put up a fight in that group. So I, I really see it as kind of a three-horse race. TSM, TL, 100 Thieves. <laughs> On the other side for Group B, I mean, I'm intrigued by what EG can do. You know, I think I think they're a bit of a wild card. I'm intrigued by FlyQuest, who I think did the best job of all the teams that basically lost their entire rosters in uh -huh. refilling in some fashion. Uh, you know, who knows how Revenge will perform. And then, as you said, there's the Goliath in C9, who I kind of expect to smash it. So. I guess I'm with you in the end because the top three. Can, I, can I knew you were going to come strong. around. You I knew, knew you were going to come gonna around. Happen. I guess I'm with you in the end because, yeah, those three, they're going to come out hot. They're going to come out. If hot. you look at off season uh, by money, Group A spent a lot more money than Group B did, even though Group B has uh, the perks buyout. Uh, the almighty yeah. dollar says Group A <laughs> is stronger. All right, let's see what slide number two's got for us here. We got uh, start a team with either Core JJ. Or Sword Art. Who are you picking up first, Cody? I, I got to go uh, Core JJ. Um, I, I, even talking to some of the, the teams and coaches and players in the offseason, um, even some of the scrims that have started already, Sword Art is great. I think that's a huge pickup for TSM. Um, however, Core JJ is just playing out of his mind. He yeah. is so incredibly good. He's so consistent. And I, I would much rather build around Core JJ. So that's not, like I said though, Sword Art's a very big pickup for TSM because they need direction, they need shot calling, they need to end the memes of the nine person sleep. So uh, that's what he's going to solve. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually okay. I'm with you again. So we're starting 2021 off on on identical feet here. But Core JJ 100% because I'm also thinking about when I start a team. Who can I build around and who is going to help others grow and succeed? And, and not that yeah. I don't think Sword Art can do that, but I think one of the things that Core JJ has done so well in the last year or two of his career is become a mentor. And you're seeing that even in the off season here for the LCS, how he cares so much about the development of not only himself, but the players around him. And so if I'm going to look at a team captain, for example, that's the kind of person that I want leading the charge. I'm going with Core JJ as well, though. This one is close. Yeah, I, I really like the point, too, about growing talents because he's been doing so much with, uh, you know, the scrims in, uh, in houses for NA players during the off season. Plus, right. you know, he is a world champion. Sword Art's a runner up. Uh, <laughs> let's get to the next slide Check the rings how many rings bigger, you got? Right. <laughs> bigger shoes to fill is it power of evil filling Bjergsen's shoes that is huge or lost trying to fill double lift shoes oh jesus um okay so here's here's my logic here i know my answer I, yeah my answer is lost filling double lift but the reason that is is because the delta between Lost and Doublelift is greater than the delta between Power of Evil and Bjergsen. So I think that I think that Power of Evil. I would <sighs> originally I would say I think the vacuum that Bjergsen is leaving is greater, but I think the person filling it is greater. And so therefore, I think the difference between Lost and Doublelift. I think he's going to really struggle. The other thing to consider is that Doublelift is a loud personality. And we're going to be missing that in the LCS. So how do you fill that as well? Do you become a trash talker too? Like, what do you, what's your what's your approach going to be? That's true. I am going to try and lawyer you a bit on this okay. one because the slide says bigger shoes to fill. Oh, uh, so it you is literally about said the shoes. That Bjergsen it's, is leaving a bigger hole. It's not about the feet. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> there, he's got bigger shoes there. You're trying to say that, okay, uh, maybe Power of Evil can fill those shoes yes. better. He's uh, got big feet. But the shoe is bigger on the foot of Bjergsen. And I, I actually do truly believe that as well. Um, I think Bjergsen was was definitely the best performer on that team, uh, you know, for so for so many years as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go with he had the bigger shoe. I also do agree, Power Beeble is gonna do a, a a better job at at filling that shoe. And I yeah. liked your little your little twist with the personality coming in though, because right? that would be the argument for double lift side. Uh, all the trash talking, all the entertainment, uh, you know. Uh, well Pearson, lawyered. Well yeah. lawyered though, man. That was that was well that was well lawyered. I, I got to admit, I got to admit. All right, <laughs> let's see what one. we got coming up next. Does Perks die once in the lock-in tournament? He had tweeted. So the the context for this, those of you who don't know, he tweeted out that he is going to try and go deathless throughout the entire lock-in tournament. I, I and mean, he didn't say is, try to. He was like, I am going. He's going to do it. You're right. Right. All you're these right. scrubs over here. Nobody's killing me. Yeah. Basically, that um, sort of attitude here. Does he die once in the walk-in tournament? I, I'm saying for a sure. Absolutely I saw, I saw he that does. I started laughing. Yeah. Uh, all right, buddy. Uh, he's coming on over here with a big attitude. I see yeah. it in some of, some of the streams too. I like that because he is a, one of, if not the most, you know, hyped up off-season pickups that we have ever had for North America. Um, you know, bringing over, getting one of these star uh, mid laners that has already got a lot of accolades. Uh, coming over, so I want him to come over, you know, and bring that trash talk yeah. and bring that attitude that he's never gonna die, he's gonna be the best. But I don't believe it. I'm not right. gonna exactly. buy it. Exactly. He's gonna exactly. die. Do, will he die? Yes. Do I want him to die? No. I kind of want him to go deathless <laughs> through the lock-in tournament and live up to that and like make a statement coming okay, in. Okay, who's gonna kill him? Who's gonna kill oh. him? Who's gonna well, be the one? So group stage, they've got what is it? It's FlyQuest Dignitas. They've got Team Liquid in there. Is it gonna be Jensen? Oh, that would be incredible. I would love that if in the battle for the mid lane dominance, week one, week two of the uh, LCS, oh, these two guys get to go at it. No, I think it's going to be something really random. Like they're going to be a They're going to go for some wild turret dive. He's going to roam top lane. They're going to go for some botched turret dive and just like into kill over to the enemy top laner because they'll be testing the waters. But agreed, that's why I'm so agreed. excited about the team. <laughs> I do think Cloud9 is going to continue to play super aggressive with him. So there's a high chance of that. Let's get to the next slide. What do we got here? Bigger off-season winner, LCS's new talent or Team Liquid signing Santorin and Alfari. All right. Uh, no, honestly, know, no. I love I love everybody uh, you know that we're picking up. Uh, you know, uh, but I uh, I feel like this Team Liquid signings. Uh, okay, fine. I'll be a nice guy, Dash. You know, I'll say they. Why not you? <laughs> let you, no, let your Team let Liquid, your color commentator brain this. go flutter away. <laughs> okay, so here's why. Here's here's why I'm so excited. Yes, those are big signings. Those are big signings for Team Liquid. But we already there's no surprise in any of that because we already knew the TL Liquid really? Steve. They got all the money that they need to throw at whoever they need to throw it at to get whoever they want. They were already a top tier team. LCS. We got the rebrand. We got these new faces. Look at that slate of people. First of all, seven new signings. That's massive. Beyond that, what I'm so excited about uh, it, with these seven people is the perspective that each of them is going to be bringing to our broadcast. While this uh -huh. is still the regional LCS broadcast, we now have experts uh, who come from all different walks of life and different regions and are going to lend that perspective. I know Emily's already super pumped about getting in those LPL references and starting to draw more lines between Eastern and Western League of Legends. Raz always brings a ton of fire, energy, and fun to the desk. Spawn, <laughs> he'll fight you. He'll play devil's advocate. I think there's going to be a lot of color this year in the broadcast, and I'm really excited about the personality that's going to come along with it. Sorry, Santorin. Sorry, Alfari. You guys are big <laughs> pickups, but I already knew. I already had big expectations for TL in the offseason. I was surprised by the LCS pickups. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I just got a message here. So I'm also going to say the LCS new talent, biggest pickups. Big winners. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's get to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Which skin line would you vote for? Okay. So we got three options. We got Monster Tamers, Crime City Nightmare, and Debonair 2.0. I'm stuck between two of them right now. I mean, it's going to take me a while to evaluate this. My initial reaction was Crime City. I, I so, really, I, I originated as a Shaco player. 
Uh, mm. and, and this is giving me some the good, worst like, the worst. evil vibes. Yeah, she's yeah. A, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> digging the, the Crime City Nightmare vibe. Low life Kobe over here. Okay, he's going for the dark, <laughs> the moody color palette. I, that's one of the ones, that's one of the two I was looking at. I'll go with Debonair 2.0. Um, I really like kind of the way that they're working in the neon colors there with the uh, more flat uh, color palettes of white, gray, and black. So mm -hmm. majority mm -hmm. grayscale, which I love, and then just a few like vibrant colors to kind of make it pop, as well as that stark white hair there that they got going on. I'm down. I wouldn't mind a refresh of the Debonair 2 or Debonair Viskin. Cause like, I want- I, I've, I never I use that one. I, I don't like honest. that skin. So, and that's, and that's my hesitation with Debonair is I don't like the original Debonair skin line, but uh, this 2.0 one looks pretty sweet. So maybe they can rework it into a place where I'd like it. I'm going to go Debonair 2.0, boom. My, my secondary choice was going to be the Monster Tamers. Uh, see really? what champions they got with the little Pokemon following them around all okay. over the place. Okay. Kobe's missing his Pokemon Go days. <laughs> Let's get to the next <laughs> we, one. We haven't been able to go outside of them. Next slide, all right. More exciting rookie, Palafox or Fudge? This is a tough call. So I feel like there is more pressure on Fudge to fill in Licorice's shoes on Cloud9. Um, yes. Whereas, you know, Powell Fox, he got picked up, uh, you know, by FlyQuest. And, and yeah, he is filling in for POE, but FlyQuest was, had to rebuild everybody. They lost every single player. And so yeah. that's going to be like a, a group rebuilding. Whereas Cloud9 have this $5 million buyout for perks. They're bringing in all this star power and the one thing that people are kind of sad they gave up is licorice in the top side and they're really hoping that you know fudge can actually uh, actually feel that i think it makes it more exciting when there's that okay. more pressure where fudge is is saying you know these these jokers in the lcs they're bad I, i'm gonna come in and i'm going to smash uh, i think him talking more trash and having more pressure uh make, makes fudge more more exciting i do think Powell fox is going to come in and surprise a lot of people and be good though Hey, okay, yeah, because I think that's an important distinction to make here, that when we talk about maybe Fudge being more exciting, this isn't to say that we expect Palafox to play poorly. It's just that the expectation around FlyQuest this season isn't that great. Again, they lost every single one of their pieces. They scrambled to see what they could get together. They were able to secure Licorice and some of the younger Academy rosters uh, of Cloud9. But therefore, I, I don't really come into the split expecting FlyQuest to be a top three team. And so I'll be pleasantly surprised by whatever Palafox does. But you're right, with Fudge, he's got to show up in order to validate the move that Cloud9 made. They got rid of their franchise, their be, you know, their new franchise player in Licorice, who is becoming established in that fashion to replace him for someone else. So Fudge, you got to live up to that. You got to live up to best top laner in the LCS status. That's going to be tough. Let's go. All right, next one. What do we got? Better name for a sale and free casting fair. Ball Duo was Freak's <laughs> original that he came up with. The Bowling Alley or Doug Duo? Doug like Duo definitely Doug rolls Duo. off uh, the tongue the best. Yeah. They, uh, also, I, I'm liking the uh, I'm liking the MS Paint job here. <laughs> For real. No, and that's why I think there's a lot of meme potential. There's a lot of fun that can be had with it. Honestly, it took them a while to get there on Twitter. Like, I don't know if you actually followed that thread, but eventually yeah. found their way to Doug Duo. And so I feel like we'd be doing a disservice to all the work and effort they already put in if we chose anything other than that. Uh, there's no point. way you go with Freak's initial one of Ball, du ball Duo. <laughs> ball duo. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's horrible. Bowling Alley, eh. What does that mean? It's not, I don't get the two reference, you know? There, like, there's at least a lot of shiny duo. stuff, a bowling ball. Yeah. Uh, people often I mean, like, I get you, that. Like, you got the bowling alley right there over the head. I mean, you and I have never experienced that, but these other two, they got plenty. I'm going Doug Duo, Doug Duo. I think Doug Duo is funny because it also uh, leaves the door open for Doug for a Trio. Doug trio. Uh, Who would be have, the Doug Trio? To have, to have a third ball in there, which Who's I'm looking the third? forward to. Kamish! Kamish is the third to make. <laughs> like who? Who else would be able to be in Doug Trio? Photoshop hey, him in there. It's gonna have to be one of us time. with a, with a bald cap on. I think that's all the slides. Let's check one more. Boom. Boom. And we are done. First episode of 2021 in the bag here. Uh, we have a, we have a lot of changes. Like we, we talked it. about with one of the slides. Big pickups for the LCS. We have a ton of new talent coming in. We also have a new YouTube uh, channel for everyone to go check out. YouTube.com slash LCS. YouTube.com slash LCS. Check it out. That's where we'll be from now on. Thank you.